This is the service for the 11th Sunday of Pentecost, August 21st, 2022. We begin with hymn 516, Wake, awake, for night is flying. Wake, awake, for night is flying. The watchmen on the heights are crying. Awake, Jerusalem, arise. Midnight hears the welcome voices, and at the thrilling cry rejoices. Oh, where are ye, ye virgins wise? The bridegroom comes awake, your lamps with gladness take. Alleluia. With bridal care, yourselves prepare to meet the bridegroom who is near. Zion hears the watchman singing, and all her heart with joy is springing. She wakes, she rises from her gloom. For her Lord comes down all glorious, the strong in grace, in truth victorious. Her star is risen, her light is come. Now come, thou blessed one, Lord Jesus, God's own Son. Hail, Hosanna. We enter all the wedding hall to weep the supper at thy call. Now let all the hymns adore thee. Let saints and angels sing before thee with harp and cymbals clearest tone. Of one pearl, each shining portal, where joining with the choir immortal, we gather round thy radiant throne. No eye has seen the light, no ear has heard the might of thy glory. Therefore will we eternally sing hymns of praise and joy to Thee. We continue with confession found on page 184 and 185. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, Increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name he gives power, to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. 
He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We continue with Psalm 50, verses 1 through 15. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and shall glory, glorify you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We return to page 186. We're going to continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> and with thy spirit, let us pray. O Lord, you have called us to enter your kingdom through the narrow door. Guide us by your word and spirit and lead us now and always into the feast of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading for this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, comes from Isaiah chapter 66, the very last chapter of Isaiah, and it includes all but the last verse of the second half of that chapter. For I know their works and their thoughts, and the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see my glory, and I shall set a sign among them, and from them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, who draw the bow, to Tubal and Javan, to the coastlands afar off, that have not heard my fame or seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations, and they shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries, to my holy mountain, Jerusalem says the Lord, just as the offering Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And some of them also I will take for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain, from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath. All flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 12. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be wary when he reproved you when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, Lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fall, fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled. But no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Jesus went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught at our streets. And he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, which you yourselves cast out. And the people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We recite the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn 510, A Multitude Comes from the Ends of the Earth. So let us sing hymn 510. A multitude comes from the east and the west to sit at the feast of salvation with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the blessed obeying the Lord's invitation. Have mercy upon us, O Jesus. O God, let us hear when our shepherd shall call in accents persuasive and tender that while there is time we make haste one and all and find him our mighty defender. Have mercy upon us, O Jesus. All trial shall be like a dream that is past, forgotten all trouble and mourning. All questions and doubts have been answered at last, when rises the light of the morning. Have mercy upon us, O Jesus. The heavens shall ring with an anthem more grand than ever on earth was recorded. The blessed of the Lord shall receive at his hand the crown to the victors awarded. Have mercy upon us, O Jesus. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we're looking at the end of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 66. And all except the last verse at the very end. At the end of Isaiah, God has Isaiah make a kind of summary of what he preached about throughout Isaiah. You see, Isaiah is called sometimes the fifth gospel. It tells the simple message of salvation, that we were sinners lost from our Lord. 
that we strove to save ourselves by our own works, but they were a stench in the Lord's nostrils. But even when we took his revelation, we transformed it, not changing our hearts so that we sought what was good and loving our neighbor, so that we sought what was good and subjecting ourselves under the rulership of God, but trying to perform the actions, the cultic um, ceremonies, the rituals that would earn for us the profit we wanted, salvation. But God, he would not accept that. He would not accept evil into his kingdom. And these external actions did not change the internal truth of our sin, of the death that was with us. And so God sent his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ not only did the external things, but he was internally perfect. His heart trusted in the Lord. He followed God's design. He did God's plan. And because his heart was perfect internally, because he was perfect, he was able to do the external things, the healing the feeding of the sick, the raising of the dead, the things that were part of God's plan. And he was able to see when these outward rituals were hurting people. So that, yes, his disciples ate on the Sabbath, picking from fields. And yes, he healed on the Sabbath. And yes, he chose to do things that the Pharisees said were not what would earn your way to salvation. Because Christ wasn't trying to earn his way to salvation. He was making and earning our way to salvation. But he wasn't worried about salvation. That was in God's hands. That, according to God's plan and God's design, was something that would happen to Christ because Christ was his child and perfect. Now we know what happened. Christ went to the cross and there is God and man he died in our place. As God, he took the sins of the entire world, not just one person. As man, he was able to stand in our steed, the Son of Man dead upon the cross. And then, because God is just and God is righteous, Christ was raised. Christ raised himself. We use both ways of saying it. The Bible uses both ways of saying it from the dead. And he received the reward that he had earned. The reward not only for him, but for us. This is the simple summation of the gospel and the law. Well, here in the last chapter of Isaiah, it begins, the part we haven't read, with the law. It says that the nation of Israel makes sacrifices, and it sacrifices bulls and goats, and it does these things that God had set up as, as rules for that nation. And God does not receive them. He doesn't accept them. That because their hearts are not pure, they cannot come into the presence of God to offer a pure sacrifice. They can't do what Jesus did. Jesus was always in the presence of God because he was pure. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who did not learn about their Messiah, who did not trust in God and in Jesus, but trusted in their own actions, their actions didn't matter. In fact, their actions were negative. All they were doing was destroying good meat, destroying good possessions, and putting other people down, making them think, that they weren't good enough for God, which is true in one sense, but is not true in the ultimate sense, in the sense that Christ makes us good enough for God. So it starts that way. And then it talks about how in pregnancy, when you're going through it, you, you don't have the baby before the labor pain. You have the labor pains, and then you have the blessing. You have the problems, and then you have the reward. And God's saying, look, people who believe in me, right now you're going through problems. 
it isn't very pleasant right now. And Isaiah was speaking to a nation that at this time had been brought into exile. Right, labor pains. It's not pleasant right now. Things are not happy. But that occurs before the happiness comes. See, the labor pains point to what's coming next. When my wife's water broke, we went to the hospital because we knew we were about to have delivered a beautiful son. The second time we didn't know it was going to be a son, but it was a son. The labor pains, the turmoil, the stresses, the trials, the tribulations that we're presently going through point to the reality to come. And yes, you look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they seem to have a more pleasant life right now. But they weren't going through labor pains. They weren't going to be delivered. They weren't going to receive the blessing. Christians in the church are told, yes, there's going to be suffering. There's going to be crosses. There's going to be pain. There's going to be sorrow. And when you see it, think of birth. Think the world is going through these things as it prepares for the second coming of Jesus. Think of the Old Testament and everything that happened until Jesus came. Think of the life of Jesus and everything that happened until he rose. The pains and the sorrows. Then we come to our verses. It starts and it kind of fools you the way the text is read on the back of our cover of our bulletin, the way I read it. It says, I know who you are. It's not speaking there to those who know Jesus. It's speaking to those who don't know Jesus. I know who you are. And the verse that follows our text says, and you will be outside and you'll be weeping and gnashing teeth and it'll be burning and, and it'll just be horrid, right? Hell. So I know who you are, people who have rejected me, who seek their own salvation by their own merits, their own works, by their own righteousnesses. You're rejected because you've rejected Jesus. But then we get to our verses and it speaks to us, to the church. And it says, look, I'm not just bringing in the Jews. I'm not just bringing in the physical lineage of Abraham. I'm not just bringing in Judah, the remaining remnant of Israel. I'm going to bring in people from all nations. All those who are now pure of heart by the blood of Jesus. I'm going to bring them together from all corners of the world. And I'm going to make of them my people, even my priests, the most holy, the Levites, the most holy of, of those chosen out by God, chosen specifically for his service. Yeah, they're going to be chosen specifically for my service. I'm going to bring them in and choose them out because Christ has made them pure. And like him, they're going to live in my way, not because they're better than you, but because now they have been changed. People who like Jesus have the Holy Spirit living in us so that our lives are different so that we love our Lord and we love our neighbors. So that yes, we look to Revelation to see what is good and right because we know that sin is still trying to, to corrupt everything we do. We know that we're still trying to judge on our own what is right and wrong. But now we have the Holy Spirit living in us, guiding our actions, guiding our understanding of Revelation. And what we do in the sight of God is good. When the old Adam rises up and we fall back, God doesn't see that anymore. But he brings us back in repentance. He turns us about. By the blood of Christ, he makes us once again his children, again and again and again. And I don't want to do this in a time sense, because from God's perspective, time is different from ours. That's why we talk about us being simultaneously sinner and saint, having this struggle going on, continuously. I don't want to talk about it in a time sense because then you start worrying, well, am I saved when I die? What if I was sinning when I died? No. You are God's child right now. 
you will be God's child in eternity. That's the point of his bringing us out of the nations. The point that it's Jesus who does it. It's not us. And so, he says, Isaiah says, look at the turmoil, but know that God has made a promise. His promise is people from everywhere are going to be brought together to live as his family, in his glory, in his place. But they will be his children like Jesus is his son. We will be his sons and daughters. And we are his sons and daughters. And that God is going to do it at the proper time. Just as my sons came at the proper time. And I was there and I was amazed at this gift of God. So at the proper time, I will go to heaven. Where Christ will come again and heaven will come to us. And the earth will be recreated anew. People from every nation, from every walk of life, from everywhere, whom Christ knows at his own. We want to focus on that as the gospel does. Who Christ knows. I am one who Christ knows. We live together as his children in his blessing. No more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain or suffering. Now the text ends with those who don't know Jesus. Not the part we read, but the next sentence. Those who sought by their own power to reach God. And it says God knows them. He knows their evil, and he knows the punishment that they have chosen for themselves. We live in his grace and are assured of his peace. Let's bring this simple gospel message as Isaiah brought it to us, as the Bible reveals it to us, to others, so that they too might be known by God, made his children, made a part of those who gather together with us at the Feast of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue with our hymn of thanks, which is hymn 791, All People That on Earth Do Dwell. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with mirth his praise for tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Know that the Lord is God indeed. Without our aid he did us make. We are his folk, he doth us feed. And for his sheep he doth us take. Oh, enter then his gates with praise. Approach with joy his courts unto. Praise Lord and bless his name always. For it is seemly so to do. For why the Lord our God is good, his mercy is forevermore sure. His truth at all times firmly stood. And shall from age to age endure. To Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the God whom heaven and earth adore, from us and from the angel host, be praise and glory forevermore. Let us pray. Dearest Heavenly Father, your plan of salvation is beyond our imagining. How could you take what you loved most and sacrifice 
that for us. And yet, that is what happened with Jesus. He who never knew sin became sin and died in our place. So that we who are but sinners became saints and live in his place with him forever. Lord God, Heavenly Father, gather us from the ends of the earth. Bring about the time of birth so that all sorrow, all pain, all these things which are evil in your sight may end. But in the time of tribulation and trouble, as we anticipate that coming again of Christ, let us be those who share your message of salvation, to bring to the eyes of those who do not know Jesus illumination, that their eyes might be opened, and they might see the truth that they're sinners and that they have a Savior, that Savior loves them and gathers them to be his own. Lord, gather in a great and mighty host so that we might dwell in glory with them forever. Watch over your church. Watch over this nation. Watch over our police, our soldiers. Watch over those who care for body, mind, and soul. Be in particular, Lord, with our families. Let us, Lord, follow in your design Raise our children to know law and gospel, and Lord, to recognize that they are those who dwell in gospel at all times and will unto eternity. We pray for all those who are sick and in need, Lord. Give them strength and healing as is your will. And Lord, hold them in your hands so that they too might dwell with us forever. This we pray in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ and join in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be glory, gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is hymn 518, The Day is Sure, or I'm sorry, 508, I wrote it wrong on my bulletin, hymn 508, The Day is Surely Drawing Near. The day is surely drawing near when Jesus God's anointed in all his power shall appear as judge whom God appointed. Then fright shall banish idle birth, and flames on flames shall ravish earth, as scripture long has warned us. The final trumpet then shall sound, and all the earth be shaken, and all who rest beneath the ground shall from their sleep awaken. But all who live in, in that hour, by God's almighty boundless power, be changed at his commanding. The books are open then to all, a record truly telling what each has done, both great and small, when he on earth was dwelling and every heart be clearly seen, and all be known as they have been in thoughts and words and actions. Then woe to those who scorn the Lord and sought but carnal pleasures, who here despised his precious word and loved their earthly treasures. With shame and trembling they will stand, and at the judge's stern command, to Satan be delivered. 
My Savior paid the debt I owe, and for my sin was smitten. Within the book of life I know my name has now been written. I will not doubt, for I am free, and Satan cannot threaten me. There is no condemnation. May Christ our intercessor be, and through his blood and merit, read from his book that we are free, with all who life inherit. Then we shall see him face to face, with all his saints in that blessed place, which he has purchased for us. O Jesus Christ, do not delay, but hasten our salvation. We often tremble on our way in fear and tribulation. O oh, hear and grant our fervent plea. Come, mighty judge, and set us free from death and every evil. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. Christ is coming. He does hold us in his grace. And we shall rest all nations gathered together in his peace. Amen.